Hello, this is uh, Constitutional Conversations with Everett. Um, this is not a constitutional conversation, but it is a video uh, made by me, Everett. Um, so today we already, in another video, which you can watch, we unbox the Founder's Bible, which you can buy in the link in that or this video. Uh, click on the link and you can buy it through Amazon. A great Bible. But right now we're going to look at J. Seculo's Jerusalem, a biblical and historical case for the Jewish capital. Uh, so this book is about, of course, Jerusalem, uh, but it's kind of half Jerusalem and half just Israel, uh, and it gives a lot of history, uh, a lot of, like it says, biblical and historical. So he talks a lot about the Bible, um, but he also talks a lot about history, um, and he makes a case. He's a, a little bit of a background. J. Seculo is one of the leading First Amendment and religious uh, freedom lawyers in the country. Uh, he's argued in front of the Supreme Court. Uh, right now, he's actually on President Trump's legal team uh, for the Russia craziness, whatever you want to call it. Um, he's doing that, but he's a very, very good attorney. He has his own radio show and TV uh, broadcast um, that he does. Uh, very, very smart, um, good constitutional attorney. So this book is a case um, for uh, Jerusalem as... Israel's capital, because there's been some controversy on that. Um, so, it's it's about 300 pages um, of words that you're reading. Um, so it's kind of long, but it is very, very good. Very well done. Um, I, of course, like I said, it's in the link below. You can get it. Um, here's a picture of him. Uh, it's a very, very good book. Uh, but I just want to give you moment. Um, just a little bit of uh, the things that he talks about in here. So, over the course of this book, he talks about a lot of stuff. There's 16 chapters. Each chapter is about 20 pages. Um, and he covers lots of subjects about why Israel has a right to exist uh, legally, and why um, the Jerusalem is Israel's capital, um, and because right now Jerusalem is divided uh, between East and West Jerusalem, and people say that the Palestinians control. Well, actually, so the Palestinians are in East Jerusalem, and the Israelis are in West Jerusalem. So the Palestinians control the Gaza Strip and all of the West Bank, and that includes East Jerusalem. Um, but legally, this entire, this entire, um, country is all Israeli. The Palestinians don't legally control anything. The Israelis just let them live there and don't bother them. Um, although the Palestinians like to launch rockets at Israel occasionally. Um, so, actually a lot. They like to watch rockets at them a lot and send terrorists. But anyway, point is, the Palestinians don't have any legal right to these territories, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, that they occupy, um, which is something that many people do not know. Um, so over the course of this book, he talks about biblical evidence. Um, he talks about how Judaism and Christianity and even Islam in the Quran, it talks about um, how the Israelites were God's chosen people and they inherited that land. It talks about the covenant between God and Abraham, uh, how God promised to give him that piece of land, Israel. It talks about ownership versus possession and enjoyment. So even when like the Babylonians came, um, if you know about the Bible, the Babylonians came and took over Israel and sent all of them into captivity, a few, not a lot, but a few um, of the Israelites were able to stay in Jerusalem, and they stayed there in Israel. Not many, but a few. So they didn't have possession and enjoyment of the land, but they still owned it. Because of God's covenant, they were still there, but they just weren't enjoying it. Um, and he talks about the difference between the word possession and the word ownership. Uh, he So he talks a lot about biblical stuff, and also um, little things in the Quran that talk about Israel, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, historical and archaeological evidence, of course, because, you know, there are people that don't believe in the Bible. Um, he talks about how, like I said, when the Babylonians came, that's the main ex a prime example, 
um, and enslaved most of the Israelites. Some of them still were able to stay, um, a few of them. Every single empire that has ever taken over that piece of land, there has always been Jews there. Since they went there uh, to the Promised Land after Moses, they have always been there. Just only in little pockets, um, sometimes, and sometimes in large numbers. Um, he talks about that. He talks about how it was actually, before it was called Palestine, it was called Judea. And the Romans, when the Romans took over, they actually started calling it Palestine. Um, so actually, in reality, all of the people living in Israel are Palestinians. There are Arab Palestinians, which is what you think of when you say Palestinian. And then there's um, uh, Jewish Palestinians, which are the Israelis. That's what we call them now, Israelis. Um, but like legally, they're all all of those people are Palestinians. Um, well, actually, only legally, only the Jewish people are Palestinians because... He talks about how in all of the founding documents um, for Israel with the, um, with, um, the British who gave them that land and then the United Nations, oh, and the League of Nations, um, all of the documents never mention the Arab Palestinians, only the Jewish Palestinians. Uh, but anyway, so never absent. Again, he talks a lot about that. They're always in Israel. Legal evidence... Um, there's lots and lots of legal stuff he talks about. Um, a lot of it has to do with the UN and United Nations and the League of Nations and lots of stuff that they've done. Um, but basically what happened was the British, if I can get back to my map over here, the British gave them Israel, gave the Jews Israel. Um, and Israel wasn't... Uh, wasn't this big. It was actually smaller. It was much smaller than this. But as soon as Israel declared independence, all of the Muslims and Arabs were angry, and so they attacked them immediately, uh, the day after their independence. And Israel um, got to keep its land, because they kind of won, in a sense. Um, but the Egyptians and the Jor Jordanians... I guess, uh, illegally occupied both Gaza and the West Bank. The West Bank was occupied by the Jordanians, and the Gaza Strip was occupied by the Egyptians. And for 18 years, well, I think, I think Egypt gave Gaza back sooner, but for 18 years, Jordan would not give up the West Bank and East Jerusalem, and they occupied it illegally under the United Nations. And then, after 18 years, there was a Six-Day War, where, um, I think also... Lebanon and Syria, Jordan and Egypt, all of these Arab Muslim countries attacked them again. And Israel actually, it wasn't even all of this, but it grew to be from Eliat to Acre, I don't know how to pronounce these things, but from the top to bottom, it wasn't this big before the Six-Day War. They gained a lot of land after the Six-Day War, and even some of this Jordan land and Syrian land and Lebanese and Egyptian land, they gained some of that too. And they got back the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Um, but they gave away a lot of this land back to the Egyptians and Jordanians and Syrians, all of them, because they wanted to have peace. So they said, hey, we'll give you all this land back because you attacked us, and so we got it all, uh, which he talks about the legality of defensive war. Um, and so then they gave it back to all these countries and signed peace treaties with them. Um, so he talks about that. He talks about how... Land taken in defensive war is what I just said. He talks about how they're recognized by the United Nations. Again, this is Jewish Palestinians, Israelis, not Arab Palestinians. The Arab Palestinians um, are never mentioned in any of these legal documents he talks about. Uh, then he talks about Jerusalem, uh, how Jerusalem is um, the capital of Israel and the legality of that. Um, so it's not even enough for me to cover in a 10 minute video, but it's just, it's a very, very good book. And if you want to know more about this topic, you should really uh, click the link on it, buy it, read it. It's, it's very good. Um, I've been reading it for the past uh, month and it's just, it's amazing. Um, so anyway, uh, this is J. Seculo's Jerusalem, Biblical Historical Case for the Jewish Capital. Uh, very good book. I suggest that you click on the link and buy it. Um, this has been Constitutional Conversations with Everett. Please remember to like and subscribe.